Hi, I'm Ben Duncan from Horse Rail. Congratulations on buying our product. Not only is it one of the safest products available, it's one of the easiest and most durable on the market today. If you're protecting your thoroughbred foal or your family riding horse, our product is extremely easy to install and you'll see how in this video. Thank you. Post installation is one of the most important parts of the job. It can be done quite easily if you have a post runner or you get a contractor to come and put them in for you. Making sure that your posts are straight and level is very important as this makes your job of putting the rail on later a lot easier. A rammed post has 10 times the holding power of a hand dug post so it is preferable to have the posts rammed in rather than dug in. Height is of the utmost importance and a fence that flows with the ground makes your rail look a lot better once it's installed. And it's a lot easier to ram your posts to the right height than to go back later and chop them with a chainsaw. All this will make your job a lot easier. Building your horse safe box assembly is quite easily. All you'll need is a tape measure, drill with a 12mm and 14 to 16mm drill bit, chainsaw and if you've got one a portable angle grinder and a couple of spanners and a hammer. Measure your rail and cut to length. Once you've cut your rail to length, you can then drill your holes for your galvanised rod around 50mm from the top of the post. Your end post, you only need to drill into the post approximately 50 to 75mm and drill straight through your secondary post. We use 10mm galvanised rod to support the rail. Make sure your holes are cleaned out, making it easier to put the threaded rod in. With your galvanised rod on your secondary post, make sure that it is around 50 to 100 mil longer than the diameter of your post. Place a small 100 mil section of galvanised rod into the end where the strainer post is. I always make my rail about 5mm longer than the gap, making it a nice tight fit. Then hammer in your galvanised rod to secure the rail in place. Then using your 16mm drill bit, drill diagonally down If you're on a corner, as in this box assembly here, make sure you don't drill through the existing rod that is there.
then grab your 12 millimeter threaded rod insert into the top hole and this allows you to place the 25 millimeter poly pipe over the top of the rod this is just for extra safety with the horses cut this to length then insert into the bottom hole once in place your washer and nut on the end of it then do the same at the other end getting ready to tighten it up Here you can see the rod tightening. You only need to tighten it until the nut has sunk into the post. I then use a portable angle grinder. A hacksaw will do the same job to cut the end off the rod and make it safe. Now you have created a horse safe box assembly. Marking your post for bracket installation is also vitally important. The easiest way to do this is to make a marking stick with visible marks which allow you easy marking of your post as well. Here with our marking stick we've also put a screw through the top of the marking stick which sits level on the top of the post. This ensures that you get the same height with every post and it is also vitally important to mark from the top down, not from the ground up. Attaching the hot top brackets is very easy. Here, where I've already put the brackets out on the ground at each post, making the job a bit quicker. We install the screw in the top hole first. Once the rail is being paid out and you put it into the bracket, then you would put the second screw in. If you're using the traditional horse rail, the non-electrified version, then you'd probably use the metal bracket, in which case it doesn't have the clip system as in the hot top bracket. Here you would put the bottom screw in, allowing you to clip the rail in and let it hold itself up before you put the top screw in. We use rechargeable drills these days, as you tend to get a couple of hundred screws out of each battery. If you have to go around the inside of a corner up to 90 degrees, you can use horse rail's 90 degree corner bracket. Here we use the brackets top or side with a 120mm long M10 or M12 galvanised coach screw. When going through the side of the post, 
I'll do a pilot hole, approximately eight millimeters and around half the way into the post. It then makes driving the coach screw much easier. We use an impact wrench here, but if you don't have one, a standard socket would be fine. Once all the brackets are on, you'll then pre-drill the top holes, ready for putting the rail in. Once all your brackets are on, you're ready to pay out the rail. Here with our spinner, we're running out two rails at the same time. It is capable of running out three, however with a four rail fence it's easier to do two and two. With your end post marked for your end buckles, place your end buckle over the rail. Use your bending tool to bend the end of the rail back upon itself. Then squash it a little bit further and simply install back through the buckle. Straighten the buckle a little bit. Insert your coach screw and ratchet off. We use the same coach screws as we do on the 90 degree corners using a 120mm long M10 or M12 galvanised coach screw. It can be fiddly placing the rail in the buckle and also in the bending tool but after a few tries, it becomes a lot easier. It's just like using a normal belt buckle. Once the two ends are attached, they just simply drive off. The rail will pay out and won't scratch on the ground. I will stop when I come to a 90 degree corner or the end of the run. Once you've run your rail out, it's a simple job to clip into the brackets. Basically, you slide the rail into the top of the bracket, cup the rail in your hand and clip it into the bottom of the bracket. The bracket will then hold the rail in place by itself. If you're using the old steel brackets, you won't even need to do this. All you do is run along and clip it in from the top. Once this has been done, simply screw your second tech screw into the post, holding the bracket firm against the post. If you're using Vinodex's new plastic posts which have a cap in the top, you need to press down hard onto this cap to make sure it doesn't pop out when you place the rail in. But as you can see here, it's quite easy and very, very quick.
Once you get to the end of the roll, joining it onto the next roll is simple using our joining buckle. Simply place the two ends of the rail through the middle slot. Making sure that if you're using the hot top rail, the electric is facing the same direction on both pieces of rail. Then using the bending tool, bend both ends over. On a cold day, even us seasoned professionals find it a little bit fiddly sometimes. Once bent over, simply place the two ends back through the hole. Once you have both ends in their respective holes, pull it a little bit tight and place it in the bracket and keep paying out your rail. Once the rail has been tightened, your joining buckle should look like this, nice and neat and flat very safe for the horses. Horse rail's strength and flexibility make it ideal for long runs with several corners. Here we've gone over 400 metres and around four different corners. From gate post to gate post it is extremely easy to use. Once the rail has been paid out and placed in the brackets, you'll need to tighten it up. All we use here, going over such a long distance, is a traditional chain grab strainer. Place it on the bottom wire of the rail and tighten. Not too tight, just enough to take the slack out of the rail. I went and sat on the fence just to help it pull round those exceptionally tight corners. Once done, cut the rail at the point where your end buckle will be attached to the post. Slide your end buckle over the rail, bend and put the rail back into the buckle. Final tightening of the rail will be done with spoolers. Here again, we use a M10 or 12, 120mm long coach screw. Once attached, Disconnect your wire strainers. You can see how quick and easy it is to attach the rail. So the same method is again used here. If you don't have a portable angle grinder, a normal set of pliers and a Stanley knife do the same job. Place the rail through the slot closest to the end of the end buckle, bend the rail and place it back through the slot that is going down the line of the fence. Now that all your rail is up, brackets screwed off, ends attached, it's time to tighten the fence. 
This is very easy using horse rails two piece spoolers. Here we'll show you how quick and easy it is. Simply place the larger piece of the spooler over the rail. Then the little half moon shape piece which holds it into the rail is slotted straight in. Try and line them up so that once you tighten the rail they tend to go in line. Then make sure you have your two pins ready and put your ratchets in top and bottom. Long handled ratchets make this job a lot easier. Doing this operation with two people is a lot easier, but here I'm showing you just how easy it is with one person. Ratchet it up until it's quite tight and looking really straight and flat. Drop your pins in, this stops the spooler unwinding. With the second person it is much quicker as they can hold onto the pins and drop them in while you hold onto the ratchets with both hands. Here is an example of where the rail at, on the top two rails hasn't been pulled as tight on the ends when we're putting the end buckles on. This means that we have to ratchet it up a little bit more on the spooler. Once the rails have been ratcheted tight, you'll have to go back between say four weeks and six months later just to give it a quick tweak up. This allows for any movements in the posts and also in the end buckles. We've had fences go 16 years without having to be re-tightened after they've had their first two tightens. Now your fence is complete.